evening. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm really happy to, to be here in the Django Meetup again, uh, along with Alexander from uh, Codebrew, uh, who's going to speak today about uh, Build a REST API with the Django REST framework, and more about uh, uh, the topic uh, he's going to tell himself. Um, I would say, um, I want to say uh, thank you to Launchy, special thank you, uh, because we are here tonight in the Hopping platform, thanks to them. And um, uh, something else, uh, because next week we are having HackConf online talk uh, on Tuesday about Flutter. So if anybody has an interest uh, to hear more about Flutter, Feel free to join us again at 7 uh, p.m. Eastern European time uh, to learn more uh, along with uh, Magic Hajan. So um, now, um, Alexander, it's your turn and I'm, I'm telling goodbye for now. Good luck. I will start with the presentation. Uh, so I will share my screen first. And uh, the presentation, the presentation is about uh, Django uh, REST framework. Uh, so, uh, just one second. Uh, so well, we are going to about uh, to talk about the Django REST framework first. What is REST? Uh, REST means representational state transfer. Uh, this is a software architecture style that defines a set of uh, constraints uh, to be used for creating web services. Uh, web services that are com conform that uh, of the REST architecture style called RESTful. Web services. Uh, REST web services allow the requesting system to access and, and manipulate uh, texture representation of the web resources by using a uniform of and a predefined set of stateless operations. Uh, the REST framework contains a couple of uh, constraints. Uh, the constraints are client server architecture, uh, statelessness, uh, cacheability, alert system, uniform interface and code on demand. The code on demand is an optional one. After a couple of minutes, you will understand why. Uh, so starting from the, from the client server architecture, uh, the client server architecture, the principle, principle behind the client server constraints is that the separation of concerns, uh, separating the user interface concern from the data storage concerns, improve the pr probability of the user interface across multiple platforms. Uh, that means that if you uh, separate all the logic, you can have um, the server logic, which will communicate with the uh, backend and the, the database, and you can have uh, different interfaces in the face of, uh, let's say, a mobile applications. You can uh, uh, easily uh, multiply the mobile applications, like you can develop it from Android, and you can develop it for iOS, and uh, everything is uh, will be easily uh, scalable across the multiple platforms. It also improves capability by simplifying the server components. Uh, perhaps most significant to the web is that the separations allow the components to evolve independently. Uh, that means that when you are creating this, uh, the, despite the communication, all the components uh, can uh, independently uh, have a different functionality, or you can add a new functionality to the, let's say, to the iOS application and a different part in the Android application that doesn't affect the client architecture. Uh, after that, the statelessness, uh, that means the client server communication is constrained by no client context being stored on the server between requests. Each request from the client contains all the information uh, necessary to service the request and the session state is held in the client. Uh, that means that uh, when we are uh, developing our application, if we have, uh, let's say, a mobile application which stores and displays all the products that you have in your database, uh, you make a request to get all the information uh, for the products. Uh, this request uh, does not um, depend on any other request. If you want to go after that and see uh, other product, one of the products from the list, uh, uh, when you go, uh, when you execute the request uh, to check the information about one of the products, uh, that uh, does not depend on the previous request that you made. Uh, that's make it uh, statelessness. Uh, Cacheability response must uh, implicitly or explicitly define themselves as either cacheable or not cacheable. 
to prevent clients from providing stale of inappropriate data in response to further requests. Uh, most of the applications, when you have, uh, let's say again about uh, the products page, when you have a um, product which was not updated, all the information from the uh, server could not be, uh, cannot be sent uh, to the application. You can use in uh, request uh, header, uh, etag. Etag is a uh, unique string, which is uh, generated when you have, let's say the, the product was updated by the updated date, you will create the etag, send it to the uh, mobile application. Uh, on the mobile application, if the user wants again to check this product, send uh, this etag. If the etag is the same as the on the server side, the server side does not return uh, all the data for the product, like uh, pictures, uh, text, or something like that. It only returns uh, the empty response and say that nothing has changed. So if the servers at the client side uh, have implemented cacheability, that means that you can only display the things that you have cached and you won't have that uh, bandwidth between the client and the server side. Uh, alert system, uh, so the next one is alert system. Uh, a client cannot uh, ordinarily tell whether it is con connected directly to the, to the end server or to uh, intermediary along the way. If a proxy or load balancer is played between the client and the server, it won't affect their communication and there won't be a need to update the client or the server code. Intermediate servers can improve uh, systems capability by adding by enabling load balancing on by providing uh, shared cache. Also security KBI is a layer at the top of the web services. Uh, this is very useful when you want to be sure that uh, your application and your uh, your end application and your servers are secure. You can uh, add a lot of layers. As I said, you can add uh, a load balancer, which will help uh, the communication between the servers, but neither the client or the server side will note that there is another layer between all the structure of your uh, application uh, and of your platform. Uh, uniform interface. Uh, the uniform interface constraint is fundamental to the design of any RESTful API, a RESTful system. It simplifies and decouples the architecture, which enable each part to evolve independently. As I said before that, uh, you can uh, easily uh, create a new functionality on the client side, like uh, adding uh, new, 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 new screen to your mobile application, but uh, if you don't need to make a request to the server, this can be done without it. So it's easy to scale one uh, or the other part. And uh, last count, count on demand. This, was, this is the optional one. Uh, servers can temporarily extend or customize the functionality of a client by transferring executable code. Uh, for example, compiled components such as uh, Java applets or client-side scripts such as JavaScript could be sent from the server uh, to the client, but uh, this is an optional one and uh, it's not uh, very uh, popular, it's not uh, used very much. Uh, so this was the constraint for the REST API. Uh, so what's an API? API is application programming interface. Uh, the, the, rest, the rest is architecture style, an API designed to expose certain aspects of application business logic on a server. REST API access a resource uh, for data URI. Uh, so when you have an API, you just describe how uh, the communication to your server is uh, executed and how uh, if anybody wants to use it, how they are going to use it. Uh, so right now we're going to uh, go to building a RESTful, RESTful API with Django. For uh, first, I'm going to uh, show you how you can do that uh, without Django REST framework. After that, I will uh, show you how you can do it uh, easier with uh, the Django REST framework. Uh, so I already have uh, created on uh, an application, the application is uh, called um, a hotel hotel app. The hotel app uh, right now contains just one second. Um, Alexander, yes, it's uh, some problem people can't see. 
Uh, yeah, I, I will uh, move from the. I want to start only the ah, server. Yeah, I'll be, yeah. Everybody can see and hear Alexander. Okay. okay, that's perfect. I'm sorry then. Yeah, uh, so uh, I have created a Django uh, project and created a Django application. Uh, the Django application contains uh, the app it's called uh, Hotels. It contains a model. The model is a hotel which only have a name. Uh, so if you want to build um, a RESTful API uh, with Django, uh, we can do it uh, like so extending. Sorry. Sorry, can yes. you zoom in a bit? Zoom in. Yeah. Uh, just. Is this okay? I think so. So when using uh, only Django. Uh, we can create our uh, class-based view and extend uh, the view, uh, the generic view from Django. After that, we can uh, create our get method and our post method. Our get method will return the list of all the hotels that we have. Our post method will uh, create a new hotel. So how are we going to do that? We override the get method after that. Uh, we get all the hotels, uh, we uh, get them as a values with the PK and name, and we are casting that to list uh, because uh, the values return a query set, but we want to, we want to return that uh, to the, we want to return um, it to the JSON response. The JSON response need a list, so it would be okay. Uh, JSON response usually work with uh, dictionary. If you want to pass something else, we need to add a save uh, false. So right now, as you can see, we're returning all the hotels data. When we go here, we can see that we are going to 800 port, that all the data from the hotel is returned in our dictionary. That means that uh, we, are, we have created an endpoint which, we, which is returning of our data. So right now we want to create a method which we reach uh, the uh, client side, uh, the, that the client, if they want, they can post some information to it. Uh, in Django, uh, the post method need to have the CRSF uh, token. Uh, so when we create this post method, uh, if we don't want, if we don't know how to send it, uh, we can add the uh, method to create a CRSF exempt or uh, remove the CRSF uh, middleware, which is uh, in the settings. It's uh, CRSF view middleware. Uh, this is not a good practice. Uh, I'm only showing you this uh, so you will have uh, some uh, knowledge how it can be done only with Django. Uh, if you are doing something like that, you probably need, uh, you will need an authentication to implement or some part of it. So you will be sure that uh, every post uh, request that is made to your server is uh, okay and it's uh, authenticated or have the permission to do this. Uh, this is only for the example. Uh, so uh, we've added the method decorator with the CRSF except, exempt. Uh, and we have the post method. We have the name uh, from the request and we creating uh, the, the hotel. Uh, I want to check how to zoom here. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I can do it, but uh, uh, if we execute the request post after that, we can see that we have our new hotel, which is added to our database. Uh, this is how you can do this only with Django. Uh, right now, I'm going to move forward and show you how to use a Django REST framework. Uh, I have created the same project, which is uh, the same app with the hotels, but uh, uh, I have the difference between the, the both uh, application is that in the second one, I'm using Django REST framework. So uh, what are the differences between the first and the second? Of course, I installed the Django uh, REST framework 
and I've added it to the start startups. Uh, the other thing is that I've added an authentication token. I will talk about that uh, in a minute. Uh, so if we move on, first thing that we're going to do is talk about authentication. As we said uh, in the previous example with uh, the normal Django, uh, when you have a POS method, there is a CRSF uh, token which is sent. Uh, the authentication here, you can use uh, very different kinds of authentication. Uh, there, the, the, there the uh, authentication plus authentication, permissions, and throttling. For the authentication, permissions, and uh, throttling, they're uh, doing the same uh, role. Uh, authentication is the mechanism of associ associating an incoming request with a set of the identifying credential, such as the user and from the request or, or token that is uh, the request, the request token that uh, is sent. So that means that uh, the authentication classes that we are using uh, will help us know which is the user that is making the, the request. Uh, in the Django REST framework, you can use the session authentication or the basic authentication. Uh, they're good only for development purposes. Uh, you can use uh, token authentication, uh, which you need to, as you saw in the settings, implement it there and uh, add it in the installed apps. How the token authentication works? Uh, the token authentication create a token for uh, every user that is created. Uh, it's not created automatically. You, of course, need to uh, create it on a post signal when your user is created. Uh, after that, you create a token uh, object and uh, assign the user that was created to this uh, token object. Uh, after that, you have a unique uh, token which will be identifier for the for this user. Uh, then, on the let's say, when you have a login, when the user successfully login, you will send uh, this token uh, to the client side. In the client side, uh, they need to store this in a session or somewhere. And on every request that uh, the client is making, they need to sign it with the. This token, the token is sent in the HTTP request header with the authorization. And after that token and uh, the token that is uh, sent. After that, the Django REST framework is doing all the work that you need. And uh, when you're making a request with this token, you can get the request, uh, the user from the request that you're receiving because uh, Django REST framework, framework is getting this user. Uh, this is uh, very useful, but uh, it does not uh, have the. Um, uh, it, it it doesn't come with uh, token refreshing. What is a token refreshing? If you want uh, your token to expire, uh, like about uh, maybe thirty days or let's say one day, uh, you need to implement the logic for this uh, token expiration. Uh, the logic is not very hard. The only thing that you need, uh, when you create a token, you have a creation date. So when you want uh, the token to, when the token expired on every request that the user is uh, making, you can verify if the uh, the day that the token was created uh, minus uh, now is equal to the time that you want the token to expire to. If this is, uh, if the time was passed, time time is passed uh, when the token, the, when the token expires, you will send a response to the server side that said to the client side that says that these talks expire. Then they will log out uh, the user and prompt him to log in again. Uh, Django REST framework uh, is easy to integrate all out and all out too. Uh, it's um, I'm I'm not going to show this in the example, but uh, there's uh, packages and it's not it's easy to add that if you want to your application. Uh, so the permission classes. Uh, the permissions uh, together with authentication and throttling permission determined where a request should be granted or denied access. Uh, so for the permission classes, there are a lot of pre-built uh, permissions like um, uh, allow all uh, users to make uh, uh, to make this uh, request to this endpoint or deny it all or, or the user need to be admin and stuff like that. And the throttling, uh, throttling is uh, similar to permission in that it determines if a request should be authorized. Uh, throttle indicate a temporary state and are used to control the rare rate of requests that client can make to an API. 
Uh, that means that uh, if uh, you want some of your endpoints uh, to have a uh, rate limit, uh, you can add the throttling there. Uh, the throttling is used when you want uh, in the, you have a sensitive sense, so, uh, you have information uh, that you don't want the user to can uh, see it uh, that often, or if you want to add it to your uh, login view, uh, if you want, don't want uh, someone to brute force uh, your account or something like that, the throttling can be set uh, to minutes, uh, hours, days, and it's uh, easy customizable in the Django admin settings. Uh, so these are the, the permission classes uh, right here. We have a uh, hotels view. Uh, this is the the base. Uh, we are extending an API view. API view is uh, like in Django, uh, the base view. Uh, after that, as we did in our uh, last example, uh, we are uh, we implement uh, override the get method. Uh, we are getting all the hotels, and we are returning. Uh, we are using a serializer, and we are returning the response with the serializer data. So if we go there, uh, just one second. Uh, you can see that all the information is returned. Uh, other good functionality for Django REST framework is that, as you can see, uh, it comes with uh, pre-built, uh, let's say, admin uh, templates. Uh, in your, if you're in the development mode, uh, you can uh, check uh, your request, you can execute request and get all the information uh, from your uh, browser. It doesn't need to, it, you don't need to uh, write your request and execute them in the terminal or you to use the Postman. Uh, this is very helpful and very useful. As you can see uh, here, uh, you can get the HTTP response, uh, the methods that are allowed. Right now they're get, head and options. The content type and the uh, uh, array is uh, accept here. Uh, as you can see, we can add, uh, is authenticated as a permission. And right now you see that you don't have permission to perform this section. And if we add token authentication as authentication, you can see that uh, you there's a WW authentication that you need to send the token so you can uh, access uh, this uh, uh, this endpoint. As you can see right now, the HTTP response right now right now is uh, 401 unauthorized. If we move the token authentication, it will be 402, which is forbidden because uh, we want the user to be authenticated, but we are sending only like this uh, request. So after that, uh, the different type of views. As I said, this is the API view. It's um, uh, the basic uh, view, which, you, which as I said, uh, looks like in Django, the, the base view. After that, we are going to talk about the generics. Uh, the generics uh, in Django REST are very useful. Uh, they, they, uh, they're uh, different types. Uh, as you can see in this example, we're uh, using the list create API view. Uh, what does that mean? That uh, in the generic views, uh, there are predefined uh, different type of uh, patterns as, they, as is described in the Django REST framework, which are uh, mostly used. Uh, like here, we can list and create, create API view. Here, you only need to set the query set, um, the serializer and the serializer class. And if you want, there's a permission class. Uh, if I've created a different URL, which is views. So when we go there, you can see that uh, it's, we have the same result as the previous one, but uh, with uh, less code uh, than before that. And you only need to set the query set and the serializer class. We don't need anything else. As it's this generic view, there's a list create API view. So you can see here that we are receiving all the data and uh, Django REST framework here, you can uh, use the create view, which is a post method. We will create uh, host, uh, hotel number three, four, and send it there. And as you can see, it's added to our database. Uh, the generic views are very useful, uh, and um, if you 
if you want to uh, simplify your code. Of course, if you want to add more functionality and use a, gener a generics view, uh, you can uh, override some of the get or the post method and uh, uh, add your code there. And uh, last are the view sets. The, the view sets, uh, Django REST frameworks allow you to combine the logic uh, for a set or rel related views in a single class uh, called a view set. Uh, view set class is simply a type of class based view. This does not provide any method handlers such as get or post, and instead provides actions such as list on create. Oh, sorry. As you can see here, uh, there is the hotel view set. We are uh, setting which model we are using right here, and there is the list, create, retrieve, update, partial update, and destroy uh, views. Uh, and right here, I'm using a uh, hotel model view set, uh, view set, uh, which is uh, we are overriding the model view set. As in the previous example, we are only using the query set and the serializer class. Uh, so right here in the URLs, you can see that uh, the view sets can be used uh, with uh, as uh, code in Django, uh, uh, in Django REST framework, uh, the routers. Uh, routers uh, sub framework such as re, uh, Rails provide functionality for automatically determine how the URLs for an application should be mapped to the logic that deals with the handling income request. Uh, red, red Django REST frameworks adds support for automatic URL routing to Django and provide you with a simple, quick, and consistent way of writing your views, logic, and set of rules. Uh, right here, we are implementing a simple router. Uh, if we uncomment that and right here, so we register a hotels and we register a hotel models uh, to the router. If we go to the URLs and add something, uh, you can see that there is the hotel, which is have a PK for a primary key and it's generated a name for that. We have uh, hotels, which is uh, generated uh, a name for that too. And of course, there's the hotel models and the hotel models uh, URLs. If we go to some of the URLs, you can see that uh, right here, uh, the old information is list. As, as this, uh, we can see the methods that are allowed here. This, uh, they are get, post, head, and options. We can create our new hotel here, of course. And as you can see, uh, the hotel, uh, we have created it. And if we want, we can uh, get or update the date of this hotel. Uh, after adding the PK in the URL, uh, we can receive the data and update it to something else. Uh, this is the put method. And right now, we can see that all the hotels have been updated. Uh, this, or sorry, only the hotel that with uh, primary key number five was updated. Uh, this is uh, generated only when we extend the view set, the model view set, and add only the query set uh, for all the hotels and uh, adding a serializer class. Uh, so right now, the, the serializers, uh, there are uh, different type of serializers uh, in uh, Django REST framework. Uh, there's a serializers, model serializers, hyperlink model serializer, list serializer. Uh, in uh, Django REST framework, uh, you you probably would think of a serializer as uh, in Django uh, the forms. Uh, a serializer is class which uh, gives you a powerful generic way to control the output of your response, as well as a model serializer class, uh, which um, provides a useful shortcut for creating serializers that deals with the model instance and query sets. Uh, right here, as you can see, we have created uh, two uh, serializers. The first one is uh, just serializer. The second class is model serializer. Uh, the difference is uh, that in the second class, we only add the class meta with the model and uh, the field that we want to be uh, serialized. Uh, as, is, uh, as in the Django forms, uh, you can call a serializer is valid uh, method which will uh, verify if all the data that has come from the request uh, is uh, valid data. Uh, you can call is valid and raise an exception. Uh, 
for every field uh, that you have uh, created to your serializer, you can create, uh, uh, as in Django, uh, you can add a valid uh, slash uh, the name of the field. After that, after that, you can create your own custom verification of the data that you have received uh, that you have received from the request. Uh, right here, I only think that you have uh, in the ser how the serializers are initialized. Uh, there, when you uh, want to send a data, you send uh, you add uh, to the, your serializer uh, the query set. You can use many. Uh, if you want uh, to set uh, to send uh, link data, that means that if there's uh, the data in your serializer, if you have a com complicated structure like a foreign key from one uh, class to another, if you set many to uh, all the data from the serializer will be uh, serialized for you and sent to the response. Uh, if you receive some data, of course, you can get uh, the data from the pass the data uh, from the request uh, request data to the serializer class. After that, you will check if the data is okay. If the data is okay, you will raise an exception if probably some field is missing or uh, the value that uh, you have received from the client side is wrong. Uh, so the model, serial, model serializer class provides a shortcut that lets you automatically create a serializer class with fields that correspond to the model field uh, from, the, uh, from the model serializer as in the Django forms. Uh, when the data is valid, you can only set uh, say, add a safe method and it will create automatically uh, your, uh, your object, uh, hyperlink model serializer. Uh, the hyperlink model serializer class is uh, similar to model serializer class except that it uses hyperlink to represent relationships rather than primary keys. Uh, by, by default, the serializer will include a URL field instead of a primary key field. Uh, the hyperlink fields are hyperlink model serializers. Are the, maybe just use the normal model serializer field with uh, the many true uh, parameter. And uh, last, uh, the list serializers. Uh, the list serializer class provides the behavior of serializing a validating multiple object uh, at once. Uh, so when if you have uh, if uh, you received a lot of data or if you need to send a lot of data, you can use the list serializer. But uh, the list serializer uh, is not uh, you can use only for uh, one uh, for the normal serializer like uh, a serializer or a model serializer. And uh, yeah, that it. That's it for me. Hello. Ah, okay. Thank you very much, Alexander. Thank okay. you. Okay, I see you. I hear you. It was great. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, let's see if anybody has questions. There are people still here. Can you see and hear us, guys? Okay. Um, does anybody have? some questions or uh, if there is uh, there are no questions uh, you can just email us or ask in the Django um, Bulgaria group on Facebook or in LinkedIn oh, thank you Sashko thank you okay uh, so thank you very much again, Alexander. I guess nobody is gonna um, ask anything. Um, and uh, again, I'm uh, reminding for the next week for HackConf uh, online talk. Uh, if you want to, to hear more about Flutter, join us on Tuesday. Uh, next uh, month, we are not gonna have a Django Bulgaria meetup. And uh, we are going to see each other in September. So uh, have a great summer. 
and see you soon. Ah, there is a question. Go ahead. Ah, can you see it? The Ah uh, yes, you can do that very easily. It you can add Slugger. You just need to add it to your uh, methods, and uh, it will generate uh, the documentation by itself. Not by itself. There's a, a there's a packages, and it's easily integrated. Okay, was it useful the, the talk for you? Hmm. Okay, uh, there are still people, so um, if um, you have time, uh, we would love to, to just uh, fill the, the pool and uh, leave some um, answers uh, if you have questions. That's do, do you have any other questions? No, I can't see. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think uh, that's um, all for today. Uh, thank you again. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Uh, it's summer and see you soon.